there is room for differences of opinion when it comes to matters of fiqh. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What did he tell the Sahaba? He said, "Do not pray Salatul Asr except when you reach Banu Quraiva." So now the Sahaba left. However, the sun was setting, and they had not yet reached Banu Quraiva. So they discussed, "What should we do?" A group of them, they said, "What the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam meant." was that we should hurry up. You know, he was just encouraging us to get there as fast as we can. He did not mean that we should delay our salah until the sun sets. So they stopped and they prayed. And then they continued. But another group, they said, no. The Prophet ﷺ gave us specific orders. Do not pray except once you reach Banu Quraiza. He said, we're going to continue. They said, we're not going to pray until we get there. And so that's what they did. When they got there, the sun had set, and then they prayed. When the Prophet ﷺ came, and they told him what had happened, you know, they told him, we disagreed. We had this dispute. The Prophet ﷺ, when he heard both sides, he did not object to either. He did not reprimand either group. He said, what both of you did is correct. He did not disapprove of one group over the other. And so what this shows us is that there will always be disagreements in interpreting the Sharia. And this will always be present. If it happened in the time of the Sahaba, then it will obviously happen after their time until the Day of Judgment when the Prophet ﷺ is not alive, right? And so from the time of the Sahaba until the present, the scholars of Islam have differed over many, many di different things when it comes to rulings of fiqh. Why? Because there are different ways of looking at the evidence. It's not that some scholars ignored evidence. No. Sometimes over one hadith, there will be two different opinions based on different interpretations, different ways of looking at it. And so we say when it comes to matters of fiqh, there is flexibility. Uh, but who, who is this for? It's not for the laymen. This is for the scholars, the ulama, for them to look into the evidences and do what is known as ijtihad. You know, try their best to look into the evidences and use their knowledge to come up with the right answer. Right? And as the Prophet ﷺ says, when the scholar gives a ruling based on his ijtihad, each of them gets either one reward or two. He gets one reward for his ijtihad, but he ends up being wrong, and he gets two rewards if he does ijtihad, and then he ends up being right. As for matters of aqidah or the fundamentals of the deen, then here we say there's no room for flexibility. You can't say, oh, let's interpret the evidence, and we should respect differences of opinion, or other matters related to the foundations of Islam. No. This is where there is room for uh, interpretation. فَأَقِمْ وَجَهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا فِطَرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ 